But 51 plugins is the next big thing that we're excited here at Voxel to bring to the community. I think it's the next real extension to how we can bring the open source community uh, more control within their 51 developments, as well as engage more people to um, put their own code, put their own plugins um, into the 51 app. So what is a 51 plugin, you might ask? Um, a 51 plugin is really the way to extend your experience within the 51 app. Right. Um, this is something that we're going to be using uh, operators or panels, things that you might be familiar with already within the 51 app. And you're now going to be able to code them yourselves. And with only some Python code, you can actually get some really nifty uh, UI um, capabilities within it. So we'll walk through a couple ones, some beginning example ones, and then we'll briefly uh, go to more advanced ones and show you how far you can really take it. Um, don't worry. This is. Um, almost like a teaser to our at most advanced users that we're uh, expecting kind of to be here. Um, and there will be tons and tons and tons of content coming out soon about uh, how to build plugins, tutorials, um, more advanced plugins, as well as new releases coming to 51 to support plugins even more, right? Um, add new things, new features, and I'll get into what those will be in the future. Um, so we have this 51 plugins repo, it's public. Um, you guys can go there now. Um, it's very easy to set up. Uh, if you already have your 51 uh, installed, there's only a couple steps in order to install any plugin. Um, what you will do is just go to the CLI, 51's plugin download, and pick the one you want. These are all listed within readmes for the, our example ones that we have today. And you're even allowed to uh, have your own plugins through local development if you just symlink, right? It's super easy. I've ran through the flow myself. Um, and it's, it works well. Uh, installing, I promise all the links work. I went through them last night. Um, they'll work as well. So what is a 51 plugin? Let's just dive into it. Um, so here we have code that I'm sure everyone is familiar with. Uh, we're just going to load the quick start and start the app. So the first plugin we're going to look at is our Hello World example plugin, uh, as simple as you can get. Um, what we're going to do is you're going to hit uh, the back tick on the top left of your keyboard, whenever you're within the app here, and you'll get the operators drop down. Now, a lot of these are familiar or should seem familiar to you as they've been here for a while, but we'll now be able to go to some of our custom ones, like my hello world alert operator, which if I click, just says hello world, right? Uh, but you can see there's this panel here, um, custom code that we wrote here. And this is basically as simple as it gets, of course, right? Um, another really simple one, is my count, Oops. my count operator. So if I go count, it'll just count the samples in my data set, right? Super easy, um, but this is all done with Python, right? You can write JavaScript to get a little bit more custom panels and things like that if you're interested. And I'll show you what that looks like right now. So let me just confirm that everyone can see my now Visual Studio. Um, this is the count operator, the count plugin. This is all the code that's here, right? Um, all we're gonna do is you have to define a config an execute, a resolve output, and register your new operator to the 51 app. So what does count do? Count is simply counting the length of the context of the view, right? Context is all the stuff that we're gonna be grabbing throughout our plugin, right? That's gonna look at things like your data set and whatever else you choose to pass to it. And you can make it this simple where we're just going to count. If I want to um, add a thousand, let's say to this number for whatever reason, I can do that. I can go back to my Jupyter notebook. I will restart it to get the new plugin code. I will then run very quickly. And we should be able to see that our operator and our plugin has been updated. So now if I go to count, we'll get a much bigger number. Oop, not that one. If I knew how to <laughs> write correctly code, then it would be fine. You cannot do length plus 1000, guys. This is also coding 101 with Dan as uh, we go through my first adventure. <laughs> but we should speak that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Only the experts at the office hours today, guys. Um, 
but you should be able to see it's very easy to edit, right? And the point that we're trying to get across here in the hello world example is you can take normal 51 functions as well as normal Python functions that you've seen a thousand times and now bring this to the app yourself, right? So now with my count, we'll see it's 1200, right? No longer 200, I've added a thousand. And there's no reason why you can't do more sophisticated things like performing um, augmentation augmentations on all the data sets, right? Um, another one I'm gonna show right here is we can actually add samples to the data set. So I can do add samples directory. I can pick any directory I want. Everyone will now know what my directory format looks like. It's all right. We have our plugin showcase. And then we have my dog Lola. She's here. Um, we can now execute this and it will add Lola to my data set. Now, I know that Lola does not have the validation tag on her because she is addressed a dog and not part of MS Coco or Quick Start. So here she is. I've now added this picture to my data set just like this. I can also export my samples and that could be the entire data set. It can be just the view and it can be file paths, labels, media and labels, all this within the app, right? And I'm gonna flip back to my Visual Studio code. We can look at my input output cache or plugin. What's nice about this one is it's only Python. There's no JavaScript. Um, you don't need to use any JavaScript. And a lot of the development that the Voxel team is doing here is to bring more JavaScript um, utilities of the plugins into the Python. So you guys don't have to worry about being any JavaScript experts or how to code a panel, how to code buttons or anything like that. If you know how to code Python, then we will do the rest for you, right? And what does that look like? We have these things here uh, within the context and resolving input where you're gonna be able to grab things um, using different patterns of types, right? So we have add choice here, which is giving you a choice between two things and that will be translated into the JavaScript. We have different ones like int, where you have to put an int in. We have a slider, we have um, different trees. We have all these different types that we've been defining um, within our code to give you this kind of extension to code into the plugin. Um, so all this is just grabbing the different directory stuff and then here, down here, you can see the familiar 51 code that we see, right? Where we're batching, we're gonna add these samples to our data set and make sure that it's getting added in. Same with export. You can see these different choices that we're using. That's our JavaScript to Python stuff. And then we're gonna see our same, same thing, these uh, 51 code, Python code that we've seen a thousand times, right? Of exporting data types, things like that. And now with plugins, you can extend this to however you want, right? If you are going to make a tutorial video for your team or a helper function for your team, you can do that, right? Maybe your data has a specific workflow that you are trying to work through. You can do it that way. If you want to apply uh, disable fusion to um, your data set and add a prompt and you have a, a diffusion model set up in the back end, you can add samples to your data set using diffusion, right? All this is possible within plugins. Thank you.